Hello grade 11s and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be going over magnetic flux, the definition, what it is, what the formula is and how to calculate it and why we need to calculate it. Remember to stay tuned throughout the videos because I give teacher tips all the way through. In the previous videos, we learned about Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And that says that if there's a changing magnetic field around a conductor, this will induce an EMF. So if I take a magnet and a conducting wire and I move them relative to each other, so for example, if I move the magnet in and out of the conducting wire, this creates or induces an EMF as well as an electric current. And how we calculate this EMF that is induced is using this formula that you see above me. And you would have seen some funny symbols in the video, that, in, the, in the formula that you may not be familiar with. In the previous lesson, I went over briefly what each of these symbols are. We didn't practice how to calculate it and we didn't go over them in detail. But one of those funny symbols is the symbol over here. And that is the symbol for magnetic flux. And that's what this video is about. So we will go over what that is, how to calculate it, and that will ultimately allow us to be able to calculate induced EMF. So here's the formula for magnetic flux, and I will explain this formula. I'll explain what each variable in the formula means, and I'll show you how to calculate magnetic flux. But first, let's look at the definition. The first thing that you need to remember is if I have a magnet, like the bar magnet that I have over here, and a magnetic field exists around the bar magnet. Now, we can't see the full magnetic field in this diagram, but we can see these magnetic field lines over here. And you can see the little arrow that is pointing like that away from the north like that. So remember, around a bar magnet, we have a magnetic field. And this is represented by magnetic field lines. Now, how electromagnetic induction works is I need to move either the magnet or the quill. There needs to be relative motion. In the diagram over here, you can see that I am moving the magnet into and out of the quill. Okay, so the conducting wire, which in this case is a solenoid, you can see the quills are looped here around and around and around. You can see that the magnetic field lines are passing through the quill. So the magnetic field is passing through the quill. Now, keeping that in mind, let's think about what magnetic flux means. First of all, the word flux means flow. So magnetic flux refers to the total magnetic field, think of the field lines, that flow through an area such as a loop. So magnetic flux is the total amount of field lines or magnetic field that passes through an area such as a loop. Here's another photo that illustrates magnetic flux and how magnetic flux can change, which we will speak about in a bit. Imagine that the blue rectangle that you see there is the quill. So it's basically the conductor. Imagine what exists up here and what exists down here are magnets, and this is creating magnetic field lines. So the red lines are magnetic field lines. As you can see, the magnetic field lines are passing through the quill or through the loop or whatever situation we have over here. In this situation, some of the lines are passing through because the quill or loop is at an angle. In this situation, the quill or the loop is flat like that, and so more field lines are passing through. So again, the amount or the total magnetic field that passes through an area, that is basically what magnetic flux is, and it can be represented by this symbol that looks like this. Okay, so that symbol is this symbol over here that you will see in this formula over here, which you may or may not have seen in class already. And that symbol over there, let's highlight it in yellow, that is the same symbol as the one that appears in the EMA formula. So that symbol is magnetic flux. And that is how we calculate magnetic flux. Now, before we get to the variables that make up the formula, let's just mention that the unit for magnetic flux is Weber or Weaver, it doesn't matter how you say it, WB. So it says there, I wrote there, think of it as the field lines that actually pass through the loop. Now, I want you to consider the two scenarios over here. The black object, the black rectangle represents the coil or the conductor, okay? So in this picture over here on the left, the conductor or the coil is like this. In this picture over here, the coil is like this. The magnetic field lines are going from top 
to bottom. Look at the arrows, they're going like this. In this picture over here, I hope you can see that the coil, imagine the coil is like a circle. I know it looks like a rectangle, but it's because you're seeing it from the front view. Imagine you look at it from the top view and it's like a circle. The coil is like this in this picture over here. It's like this, okay, like this. The magnetic field lines are all running through the coil. So I don't know if you can tell, but in this picture on the left, all the magnetic field lines are passing through the coil. Imagine the coil is open like this. The magnetic field lines come down. All the field lines are passing through the coil. If all the field lines like that pass through the coil, then we say that magnetic flux has a maximum value. And they write here, or I wrote here, that magnetic flux has a maximum value if the field lines, so the lines are coming down like this, are perpendicular to the plane of the conductor. Sounds fancy, but basically what they're saying is the magnetic field lines are coming down like this, but the conductor is lying flat like this. That makes a perpendicular angle a 90 degree angle. The reason why it's at a maximum is because the conductor is like this. It means that it's open like this. It's lying flat like this, but it's open. So all the field lines can go through it. However, in the situation that I have here on the left, on the right, sorry, what we can see is the following. The conductor is like this. So remember, it's, it was like this. Now we're tilting it like this. So the hole is like now facing that way. Okay, the conductor is like this, but the magnetic field lines are still coming down. Can you see that no magnetic field lines can actually pass through that hole? It's not like this anymore. It's not open where the lines can come through. It's tilted like this on its side. The magnetic field lines can't go in it. Okay, it's on its side like that. So that's when we say magnetic flux has a minimum value if it's parallel to the plane of the conductor. So the field lines are going down like this, and the conductor is like this. They're parallel. I did put an angle here in each case, and we'll go through the angles when we look at the formula in more detail. But this is basically what magnetic flux is. It's the amount of lines or the amount of, you know, field lines that pass through the coil. Now, let's have a look at this formula in order to calculate magnetic flux. And let's look at what B, A, and cos of the angle. Let's look at what all of these things mean, how to find it, how to get it. First things first, B is magnetic flux density. It's a measure of the strength and the direction of the magnetic field. The unit is Tesla or T. Okay, now B is essentially the strength of the magnet. So if we have a stronger magnet, B is bigger. The stronger the magnet, the greater the magnetic flux. That's all that B is. Now let's look at A. A is the area of the loop. So remember I spoke about the coil, this thing like that, and we can rotate it or whatever. It's the area of this. So do I have a small circle? Do I have a big circle? It's measured in meters squared. Then we have cos of an angle. Now, what is this angle? This angle is the angle between the magnetic field, the field lines, which is B, and the normal to the loop. I will show you what the normal to the loop is now. But if the angle is zero, cos of zero, and you can try this on your calculator if you've forgotten about cos or think about your trig graphs, cos of zero is equal to one. So if your angle is zero, then that is the maximum amount of field lines flowing through the conductor. And that would correspond to this photo over here. So the angle is zero, that's the maximum amount of lines flowing through. If the angle is 90, cos of 90 is zero, which means nothing is allowed to flow through. And that's this picture over here. Okay, so what's the normal to the loop? If you have a loop, and now again, pretend this is my loop. Let me get something circular to show you. Right, so pretend this is my, my loop, just like the picture over there on the screen. The normal is an imaginary invisible line that is at 90 degrees relative to the surface of the loop. So if you look at this loop here, it's, like, it's flat like this. I don't know if you can tell. The normal would be an invisible line that comes up 90 degrees towards the surface of the loop. So if I rotate the loop, the normal rotates with it. Okay, that's the normal. So remember, the angle is the angle between this invisible line, this normal, and the magnetic field line. So if you take a look at this picture over here, here's the normal, okay, this black line drawn in over there, and then this green line is the magnetic field line. The angle between those is the angle in the formula. Here's another diagram over here in case the first one's not clear. That is what theta is, that's what the angle is. 
And here's basically, again, a summary of what happens if I change the angle from zero to 90. And it's actually using the formula so you can see how it works. Let's take a look at the first picture. Here, they're not using a circular coil. They're using a square one. It doesn't matter. So here's the square coil. You see all the magnetic field lines. Are, I'm talking about this picture. All the magnetic field lines are going through that conductor. So that's going to be maximum flux. The reason why is because the angle between the field lines, so look at the, the purple field lines, and the normal to the loop. So here's the loop, here's the normal. Okay, The field lines are also going in the exact same direction like this. So they, there's no angle between them. Here's the normal of the loop, and the field lines are going in like this. They're not going in like this or like this. They're, that's the normal, and the field lines are going in like that. The angle between them is zero. And cos of zero is one. So in this situation on the far left, that's where magnetic flux is at its maximum. The picture in the middle over here, you can see that here's the coil. We've rotated it now. The coil is like that, or the conductor is like that. The magnetic field lines are still going in the same direction, though. The normal to the coil is like this. So coil or conductor, the normal. And the magnetic field lines are going like this at 90 degrees. You can't, if you look carefully, you can see I did a little right angled sign over there, over there. Okay, so the angle between the normal and the field lines is 90 and cos of 90 is zero. And if you think about it, look at the coil. The coil is flat. The magnetic field lines are like passing over it. There's no field lines going through that coil. And the picture on the right is somewhere in between where theta is maybe like 30 degrees or 40 degrees or something like that. Okay, so there's a summary of what I just said and there are the pictures to help you. In the next video, we will actually practice some examples of calculating magnetic flux and we will practice calculating change in magnetic flux because that is what we use in order to calculate EMF. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe for more. Bye everybody.